Let's look at this image. For these two objects A and B that are connected by a non-elastic rope wrapped around this pulley, we can easily predict that if object A moves upward, then B must move downward. And we can also tell just from experience that they will move at the same speed. This is because the rope connecting them has a fixed length, therefore the motion of these two objects are dependent on each other. We will use this very simple example to write a strategy to mathematically solve similar problems involving two particles with depending motion. First step, just like what we learned before for rectilinear motion, we need to set up a coordinate system in order to represent the position of the particles. So we choose a fixed point to be the origin and choose downward to be positive position but for this type of problem involving pulley systems, it's more convenient to draw a datum, which is a line, that any point on it represents a position of zero. Now with the help of the coordinates, we can now properly represent the position of the two particles respectively using one-dimensional position vectors again. The position of particle A, SA, and the position of particle B, SB. Don't forget, SA and SB are both variables that change with time. Step 3. Recognize the constant length in the system. For example, for this piece of rope that wraps around the top semicircle of the pulley, although it also moves, but the length is always a constant. Let's call it L semi for now. Step 4. Notice that I put a different background color for this step, since in my opinion this is the most important step and also the easiest for students to make mistakes. Here we need to find out how the positions of the two particles, in this case SA and SB, are related. For this example, it's quite simple. The total length of the rope is a constant. And therefore, that equals to SA plus L semi that we talked about earlier, plus SB and that equals to the constant length LT. Recognize again, in this equation, L semi and LT are both constants, but SA and SB are variables with respect to time. And now, we can take the previous equation and take the time derivative of the entire equation. And that becomes dSA dt plus 0 plus dsb dt equals to 0. By definition, the time derivative of position is the velocity. Therefore, dsa dt is simply the velocity va, and dsb dt is the velocity vb. Therefore, this becomes va plus vb equals to 0, or va equals to negative vb. And this agrees with our initial guess, that the two particles will move at the same speed, but the negative sign indicates that the direction of motion will be opposite. When A moves up, B moves down, and vice versa. And if necessary, we can differentiate the velocity equation again to get the relation in the acceleration of the two particles. So now let's apply our strategy to this example, which is a little more complicated than the previous one. Again, we have two objects that are connected through this multiple pulley system. We know the velocity of particle A, and we need to find the velocity of B. Unlike the previous example, for this one we can see that there are two ropes involved marked with different colors, orange and purple. Therefore, the depending condition that we are going to write later will involve that total length of rope 1 and the total length of rope 2 are both constants. So let's follow our strategy to solve this problem. Step 1, draw a fixed line, the datum, set the coordinate S. Step 2, represent the positions of the two objects by the position vectors respectively, SA and SB. But since SA and SB are not even on the same rope, it is necessary to define another position vector, say SC, to serve as a middleman to connect objects A and B together. 
Step three is to recognize the constant lens. Step four, again, the most important step is to write the depending relation of the positions. First, the total length of rope one, the orange rope, is a constant. That equals to SA plus SC plus another SC and then plus some constant length that we discussed earlier and that equals to the total length LT1. And then for the second rope, the purple one, its total length equals to this is SB minus SC and plus SB and then plus some constant length again and that equals to the total length LT2. And now we can combine these two equations by canceling out the middleman SC and get SA plus 4SB equals to a total constant length. And now step 5, we differentiate this equation and then we get VA plus 4VB equals to 0. So VB equals to negative VA divided by 4 and that is 0 0.75 meter per second pointing downwards. Here is a different type of problem that also involves dependent motion. There is a plate with height of 8 meter moving towards the wall and a fixed light source casts its shadow on the wall. Obviously when the object moves, the top of its shadow moves as well. We know that at this instant the speed of the moving object is 2 meter per second and we need to find the speed of the top of its shadow. For this type of problem, first step, we still need to set up the proper position vectors. Here SA and SB are set up along different axes but they are both originated from fixed points and they represent the position of the moving object and the top of its shadow respectively. And then, again the most important step, to find the dependent relation between these two positions. Since these two triangles are similar triangles, therefore we can write the ratio between SA and 8 equals to the ratio between 40 and SB. Or, these two ratios are the tangent value of the same angle anyway. So from here, we get SB equals to 320 times SA to the negative first power, or simply 320 over SA. And now, we can differentiate this entire equation with respect to time. The left-hand side is simply dSB dt, which is the velocity Vb that we are looking for. The right-hand side, to take the differentiation with respect to time, we can apply the chain rule from calculus. So we find the differentiation of 320 times SA to the negative first power with respect to SA, and then multiply that by dSA dt. And dSA dt is the velocity Va that's given. Therefore, since we know that SA equals to 20 meters and VA equals to 2 meters per second, we substitute those in, we can calculate VB to be negative 1.6 meters per second. Negative sign indicates that the top of the shadow moves downwards.